your coffee, your tea in place, get comfortable. We are going to have an exciting uh, series this morning with our financial literacy coaches, LaQuinta Martin and Christine Martin. This morning, we will be going over spending spiral, emotions and money. So I just want to say I'm so excited for this series to take place. I hope you are comfortable and ready to learn something. Again, make sure you sign in at the bottom inside our chat. If you need interpretation, the globe is located at the bottom. And I am now going to turn this over to LaQuinta Martin. All right, thank you so much. I am so excited to see every single one of you, those who have your cameras on. Um, my name is LaQuinta and I will be your hostess. I will be your coach. I will be your guide. And we're gonna talk about a subject that is extremely close to my heart and one that I enjoy talking about a lot, which is emotions. But we're going to blend that into the conversation of money and financial literacy. So today, I want you to open yourself up. We're going to get a little real. We're going to get um, to the heart of the matter. And this is following up our conversation on the basics of budgeting. Today is all about you. So this is going to be a customized way to look at how we spend and sometimes how we spiral, okay? So the first thing I want everyone to do, um, just so I can get to know you all and get to um, understand a little bit more, I'm a very interactive presenter. So whether you're on your phone or if you're on your computer, um, similar to us, I wanna make sure we can interact. So you are welcome. If I ask a question, come off mute, talk with me, chat with me. I want to hear your voice. If you are able to or prefer, you could just type away, okay? So we can just go ahead and chat. We can text whichever version of uh, interaction. But please, I want to make this very, very real for us all because the conversation is really about where does our money go? How come it doesn't stay with us? And where do our emotions fit into that whole concept, okay? So again, my name is LaQuinta Martin. I'm an enterprise consultant. Um, I'm also an emotions coach. And I have been um, uh, very, very excited to prepare and to partner uh, with Christina Martin, um, who's actually my real sister. But we, we have expertise in different areas of finance. And so hers is tax and business. Uh, mine is emotions and enterprise management. So I hope that you're ready, because here we go. So on this past Tuesday, we kicked off the conversation of money, of management, of budgeting, and I learned a lot of nuggets, and I'll have some reviews in here for those of you if you couldn't make it, um, but you're welcome to go and see the video. I want to make sure that everyone knows that this is an ongoing conversation, and it's something we need to talk about, um, but we did start with budgeting and the basics of where our money gets categorized and how do we make sure that the money that we have coming in goes out in the way that we want and maybe we can increase it as well. But today is all about spending and where do our internal emotions and our mindset kind of come into the conversation of our money. Uh, we do have two additional workshops that are coming up. Um, these are a part of the series. So the Financial Family Flex, I will be hosting on this upcoming Tuesday. And then my sister is going to wrap it up on next Saturday with the Tax Toolbox. So this is a whole custom four-part series. If you miss any of it or you want to share, please make sure you go to um, YouTube. And I believe it's also on the Facebook pages. So stay connected with us. And like I said, we're on part number two. So today, we're going to be talking about the spending spiral. For those of you who are just coming in, please feel free. Tell me what city you're in, because there may be people here from California. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada now, but there may be people from all over the country. So if you'd like, please put what city you're from. I'd love to just shout you out. Um, and our main discussion points today, number one is going to be defining the emotions that we go through, okay? 
The second part is going to be the four different personality styles of money, okay, and how we spend. What is your style of spending? And then the fourth part is going to be why we spend the way we do. So we're going to go through those. And like I said, we are going to interact. We're going to chat. And I want to hear from you, okay? So let's start off. And I want you to know a little bit just about my background because I've attended workshops and I've attended and registered for things. And I'm like, I don't even know who this person is. Why do they even have the, uh, the stage to share with me? So I'll give you a little bit about me. I grew up in a family of five. Um, I, my mom and dad had three children. I am the middle child. I like to say I'm the most... Um, the, the most like calm and centered, but I don't know. You ask my siblings, they may say I'm, I'm like a firecracker. <laughs> so it just depends on who you ask. But I feel like growing up, I was always very in tune with those around me. I was very loving, nurturing. And so maybe that is one reason why I ended up becoming an emotional intelligence um, instructor and facilitator. I feel like emotions affect almost every area of our lives. Um, decisions about our relationships, our jobs, just everything. So I love talking about this subject. Um, I'm also an expansion coach. I consult with organizations um, and individuals to train them on how they can really expand their visions on a personal basis or professional and as a business entity. I am blessed to be an education director and I've taught in colleges and high schools. Um, the elective of business. Um, I've also been able to be a dean um, for business departments um, in university level. So um, I've enjoyed that. Like teaching is my thing. <laughs> and then I also have written a book last year. I released it. It's called What Are You Thinking? And it's all about mastering your thoughts and how do you maximize your emo emotional intelligence. And so I am going to define that very soon. And lastly, I, um, in the pandemic, I had some friends and I, and we would always have these conversations about, you know, parenting and professional decisions and just trying to have stability. So I launched a podcast in 2020 called Defined and Designed. It's a life coaching uh, podcast. And uh, there's some really cool things. I talk authentically all the time about my failures and fitness, just any kinds of topics. So if you want to check that out, it is on Spotify. So that's a little bit about me. And again, if you haven't already dropped in the chat, like where you're from, or if you want to share your industry that you're in, that's great. It'll give me some context of just who's in the room. And I would love to just say hello to you and meet you. Okay. So again, my whole um, category of expertise is emotional intelligence, but I like to start these social kinds of conversations and then relate it to self-care and whatever category of life that I'm speaking to. So that's a little bit about me. So let's jump into this. I'm going to start off with a question. What emotion are you primarily feeling today? Okay. So... I would love to see. Okay, we've got, oh, thank you. I see Lancaster is in the house. Little Rock's in the house. Roseman. Hey, Roseman. Okay, wonderful. We've got different cities all over California. I'm currently in Irvine, and it's so pretty out here. It's very green and serene. So, okay, I see some, some people are dropping in the chat their emotions. I see frustration. I see energized. Um, I also see someone saying very curious, okay? Grateful, that's a very powerful word. Happy, content, okay? So we've got a range of emotions, okay? Some people waking up and they're like, I haven't had my coffee. Um, I'm feeling a little rushed. Oh, I love calm. That's, that's, that's a good word. Where can we operate from, okay? So I wanna ask you now, that we've identified what that emotion is because there's a technique. I'm always going to help you to stay grounded, which is you have to identify, you have to name your emotion. Okay. So that means you have to have an emotional vocabulary and hopefully today we'll, we'll expand that a little further. Okay. So with the emotion that you're feeling today, keep that in mind, but I want you to think of this. What's the last thing that you spent money on? 
okay? For some of us, it may just been Starbucks. Um, so you can put the most significant thing, like maybe it was you splurged on a purse or um, a hotel room, maybe you needed to get away. So what was the very last thing or, or most, you know, significantly, maybe in the last 24 hours. Okay, Robex, so somebody got a juice. Okay, what, what flavor, what did you get from Robex? Dinner, okay, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Shoes, ooh, was it heels? Was it boots? Was it some sandals for the summer? I wanna know. Ooh, y'all got me all excited. Food, it's always food. Me too, me too. I'm always spending on food. <laughs> Okay, and Candace says she got a tropical nuts with some, oh, okay, you got some protein, okay. And, and Christina says she got some tennis shoes. Crab and spice, oh my goodness, I love that place. Yes, yes. I love cracking open the shrimp and like sucking the saltiness. Oh, yes. Okay, so some workshops for your daughter. Oh, wow, my son is in gymnastics and um, that's a part of my budget every month. And he just asked me, he, he currently does like the bars and the flips, but he asked me, mom, could I start the break dancing? I guess they have break dancing now. So yes, we sometimes spend on our children. So food, I see a lot of food here. And I'm wondering if there was any emotional side to some of that, you know, like, hey, I don't even feel like cooking or I'm gonna just grab a smoothie. But why, why did you spend on it? Could you not have made it at home? Could you, okay, did you want to go out to eat um, with the crab and spice? Did you not want to do your own crab bake at home? Do they just make it a little bit more succulent? What was that decision about, okay? So that's kind of some opening things I want us to keep in mind. What did we spend money on and why? Okay, so that's just more of an internal question because this is an exercise that we can start to become much better at over time, okay? So let's talk about it even more. Let's talk about it. So these are the main categories of emotions. And I'm not saying this is an extensive list. No, no, no. <laughs> this is just some basics, okay? But at least it gives us some common language while we're together. At least it gives us the opportunity to start to label our emotions, okay? And so the first category, as you see at the top, is worry and fear, okay? So perhaps when you're out and about during, during your day or during your week, there's some things that you consider or are heavy on your head. And because of that emotion, um, you may make a spending decision, okay? Joy and happiness. So I don't know if those tennis shoes were about, you know, hey, I'm about to start the gym. So I'm gonna give me some new pink tennis shoes because I need to look cute in the gym, not sure. Um, and happiness. So we're gonna talk about that too. And then sadness. Sadness oftentimes is a big category in which we spend because we're wanting to feel better. So we're gonna get into that a little bit more. But these are some defining emotions that all of us go through in different stages and seasons of our day and of our life. Okay. Oh, I see somebody bought some new jeans. Were they ripped jeans for the summer? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've been doing those high-waisted ones because look, they make me look a little more slender and stuff. I like that. So, <laughs> yes, yes. Sometimes we buy our clothes because we want to feel better, look better. We saw somebody else with it on and said, I want to look like that. Yes. All of these things do happen. It's very real. It's not just in your head. So I want to make sure you know that I know that it's real. Okay. So I do appreciate all of the interaction. I see you all. Okay. So let's define what is emotional spending. And as I'm reading, I want you to write the word that jumps out at you the most. Okay. So what is it? What is emotional spending? Number one, it's buying items you really don't need. Sometimes it's things you don't even want. I was online on Amazon. This was um, this was three about three weeks ago. I went to my friend's house. She just moved into her new place in Vegas. And I was in her restroom and she had this cute little soap. And then I looked over, she had a glass like shower. And in her shower, she had this cool little caddy. So all of her shampoos were like organized. 
whereas mine are like all over the tub, you know? And so I felt like I need the same shower caddy <laughs> that she has. And I, I don't need it, but I bought it immediately just because I saw it at her house. So emotional. I was like, yeah, that looks nice. So I bought it. Um, and the sad thing is I haven't put it together. I'm not even using it. This is sad. So yeah, I had an emotional spending moment. Number two, <laughs> it's spending money during a period of heightened emotions, something like stress, something like sadness. Okay. So that is another form of emotional spending. And I, I, I'm going to get very solemn about that because um, I'll talk about a time like my, my mother passed away in 2019. And I remember some of the things that I started to spend on either in her memory. I remember um, some of the things that I felt even um, as we were putting together her memorial because of the emotions, there were things that we said, we want to honor her. We're going to do a full color, you know, um, burial. We, every, you know, so it was very emotional and that grief made us make decisions out of that sadness, out of that grief, out of that loss, okay? Number three, emotional spending is a coping mechanism. It's sometimes used to avoid, okay? So these are the three categories. So in the chat, and I'm gonna check it now, let me check out what is going on in the chat. Okay, um, it makes you feel happier feeling a void. That is very, very honest. Thank you, Tracy, for putting that in the chat. And then, oh, I love the real said Sometimes it makes you feel free or at ease. You know, you, you make a, pur a purchase and it, it looks good, feels good. And you're like, oh, so free. I feel so, I feel like I'm cute. Yes, I've been there. I have been there. Um, to relieve stress. I was just talking to someone in the hotel I'm with. There's a breakfast downstairs. And I was talking to the um, person sitting next to me and telling them about the workshop I was about to do. And, and they literally were like, I just was spending some money on some clothes to because I had a bad day at work. I went shopping to relieve that stress. So it happens. Okay, Candy, so you are not alone. There are others who do that too. Um, it's kind of like the same as eating, yes, because sometimes we eat out of stress or emotion. So look, we could do a part three, part four on this emotional you know, way that it affects our lifestyle. And yes, chocolate does solve everything. I just had a Snickers um, the other night. I was feeling a little frazzled and that Snickers bar was there to give me love, you know? <laughs> so I understand it. Thank you. Thank you all for the interaction. Okay, so now that we've talked about you know, defining emotions. So we have a category. Um, and then now that we know that emotional spending can be from avoidance or addressing, I really want to talk about just what that cycle looks like, where you're taking action or maybe even from a positive side. It, it, may, it may look like this. So I'm going to read these. One, you know something will improve in your life. You want to do it. Then you look forward to doing it. But then you suddenly don't want to do it and you start, and now you want to keep doing it. And after you finish, you're glad you did it. So on an emotional side, in a positive way, things like going to the gym, meditating, um, avoiding um, unhealthy foods or sugary, sweet foods, um, salty foods, because those are things that are more based off of like cravings, or even something like a practice of journal writing. At first, it may be a little hard, like you start telling people you're going to do it, but then you're like, oh, I really don't want to go to the gym. I really do not want to go walk in this morning. But then when you do it, you feel extra. You take a picture. Oh, I did it. I did my walk, y'all, you know. <laughs> so emotions are really tied to the, the things that we take action on. And sometimes overcoming that cycle or breaking that cycle um, means that we have to be attentive. Okay, so being attentive I want us to really understand what is emotional intelligence. So emotional intelligence is that self-awareness and that's why it's right there in the, in the middle that helps us to self-regulate and boost our own motivation. But it also gives us the social skills to have empathy for others, maybe when they are a little bit, you know, on one side or to the right or to the left of that pendulum. 
So it gives us empathy. So as I'm reading the chat right now, I'm having all kinds of empathy and connections with you all because I understand being very self-aware and being real with LaQuinta myself. I'm like, I've been there too. I bought those jeans. I bought that shower caddy. I ate that chocolate, you know? <laughs> so I'm over here connecting with you all because I know as a social human being, there's others that are going through similar situations. So our emotional intelligence, like all that goes on in our head is being like present and self-aware so that I can self-regulate, but it's also so I can connect with those that are around me. So um, even though we're talking about internal emotions, I want us to be aware of the fact that other people go through things too. So if you see someone who's going through grief or loss and they're spending money on, you know, my mom always loved pink or my mom loved cats and I'm gonna buy six cats. They're in an emotional place, you know? So that's normal and let's have some empathy, but then we can like talk to each other through these kinds of situations, okay? Because it does, it can impact our bottom line and our money can really be rocked depending on what state of emotions we're in, okay? So here's a good quote. I don't know who said it. I know one person said more money, more problems. But I like this, more money can't fix um, bad spending habits, okay? And so as we continue to talk about the emotional side of our spending, we want to talk about the habits that come along with it, okay? So I'm going to pause. Are there any questions so far about emotional intelligence or the emotions that make us spend money? So if anyone has something they want to either say or chat about, we will take a pause and we will talk about it. So if there's anything that anyone wants to chat or say, come off mute, it's all good. This is all about being real and sharing. Okay, so if you want to, you can put your name in the chat or raise your hand and I will, um, I'll let you share, okay? Because it's my, my voice doesn't have to be the only one heard today. Okay. All right. So I want to transition us to money personalities and spending styles. So you might find uh, out a little bit more about yourself and we want to be able to raise our hands and say, yep, that's me. That's exactly me. All right. So the first type of money personality is the achiever. Okay, so the achiever type of person, this person is defined by the desire to hit their goal. So this is that person who's always got their money budget tight. They follow it to a T. Um, if they're going to save three thousand dollars or, you know, their home um, uh, for a new home purchase, like when they say they're going to do something with their money, they do it. They do it. They do it well. They do it often. They don't get distracted. OK, the second type of money personality is the enthusiast. OK, and I think this is this is a little bit of me. So once you see yours, drop it in the chat. OK, please write which one you are. Enthusiast types of people, they are defined because they want to explore the world. These are the people who always post in their traveling somewhere. Uh, they always are on like social media showing you their new, I went to this Indian restaurant, the food was so good, they're showing you their plate of food, you know, they're very exploring and open-minded and enthusiastic about life, so they spend in that way, okay? Um, the next type of personality style when it comes to money is the steward. They really like to have stability and harmony. They don't want any interruptions. <laughs> they want everything to be planned. Okay, they're good stewards with their money and they like things to be calm, okay? So that's the steward type of personality. And lastly, so I should see some people putting theirs in the chat. Which type of person are you? Okay, uh, the analyst. Now this type of personality with money is the one who likes to plan ahead. And they really are uh, like a learner. They are a student at heart. They're, they're looking at what is, what is this cryptocurrency? 
What does this mean to have a money managed account? What does it mean? So they are really looking at like the trends of their money. They might even have it on a spreadsheet, very analytical. People who are like tax professionals, like my sister. <laughs> so analysts, they study their own numbers and um, like to plan or prepare. So let's see um, if, if you feel like, you, you know, you've had the courage to share. I, I'm so grateful for that. Thank you. Oh, I see we have an analyst. All right. I see you. I see you, Solror. You're an analyst. We have enthusiasts in the building as well. No. Okay. Any others? Any achievers? Oh, okay. They, I see some steward analysts. That's a combination that I often see. Definitely. Enthusiasts are in the building. That's me too. <laughs> I will take a picture of my plate and show, show you I'm going on a cruise. I will have my cruise on my Facebook. Yes, I love exploring the world and new experiences. Okay, so let's talk more about not just our money personality, but now we're going to combine that with our spending type. Okay, so we know our money personality. What is the spending type? Let's, let's look at those two and see how they connect. So I, I, I like to say in marriages or relationships or friendships, usually like opposites attract um, or we, we go in bunches. So which type are you, the spender or the saver? So are you the person who loves the shopping, loves to give, um, they budget in a little bit of a creative manner, meaning things always change, middle of the month, switching things around, you know, things like that. Or are you one of those consistent savers? You know, your priority is the saving. Like you get your paycheck, you put your savings away. You put your retirement away. You put your investing away. And then after all that saving, you, you are a person who can be patient. So you don't impulse buy like me with the shower caddy. You know, that $24.99. Why did I spend $24.99? on a shower caddy, I don't know. But I can tell you why, because I'm a spender. I know my personality type and I don't hide it. I know so that I can manage it, okay? So it's about being honest with yourself. Um, but savers are really great individuals to help partner with a spender type of personality because they can balance each other out. The spender will help the saver to go on vacation. The saver will help the spender to not uh, over, indulge you know hey instead of you know going out tonight for greek mediterranean food you know why don't we buy some hummus go over to trader joe's <laughs> and eat at home you know so that's that's one style um the next type of individual that we will see are people who are more experience oriented or people who more are into like things um, tangible items, purses, shoes, um, but others really want the moment, you know, so like me, um, going to like Tokyo steak and having the experience of all the fire and the, the steak and the shrimp, and it's a show and, it, you know, I want all that. Someone else can go to Albertsons and get a grilled, you know, roasted chicken and eat at home and no big deal. I want the experience of it all. So are you more of a things type of person? You enjoy getting gifts, opening them up, you know, or do you want someone to go and take you on a walk for your birthday and spend time with you? So what type of individual, you know, and what do you appreciate more? Someone who gives you something or someone who gives you some time and an experience, okay? So let me check out the chat. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Okay, um, so I see we have some savers, okay, and then there was an example I gave because you have a, who has a blender and a juicer? See, see Candace? But I'm sure it was really nice to go and have someone else make that drink. Like ginger, ginger orange, um, it's very hard to get that ginger right at home, but at Jamba Juice or, you know, they have something in their blenders that just the machine is better or I don't know, the wheatgrass is weedier. I don't know how to do it the <laughs> same way at home. So I get it. I get it. Sometimes we, we treat ourselves. 
Um, and I see that there are some experienced lovers. I see quite a few. Give me the experience. Give me your time. Yes. And that, that fills up our emotional cup, you know? So I get it. I totally understand. All right. We got one more. Which one are you? Are you more of the nerdy type of spender <laughs> or are you more of the free spirit? Guess which one I am. Drop it in the chat. Y'all probably have figured it out by now. <laughs> which one am I? <laughs> so uh, the nerd, yes, yes. Which one am I? So I'll start. I am a free spirit. <laughs> I live life to the fullest. I don't like budgeting, but I do it as a standard <laughs> to keep myself in control. Not worried about the details. Yes, yes. And Candace, okay, I don't know if you're saying you're a free spirit like me or you know I am, but yes, I am. Um, but our nerd type of spinners, we, these are the individuals who have such a gift and an appreciation for looking at the str strategic budget and spreadsheets. They use a lot of tools, maybe. Um, it, it could be paper-based, but they're definitely very attentive to detail, okay? These people have their taxes paid early, you know, a few months ahead on their rent, lease, car note, you know. So that's the interesting thing, actually. I, I have a lot of nerd, um, nerdy aspects to my personality, but if you're really at the core and you ch and you like hang with me, I'm definitely a free spirit. Um, Candace said, it's just me. So I'm like, next month, I'll blame a bank <laughs> for the tools not working. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, free spirits are in the building and nerds, please help us out. Be our friends. <laughs> help us. But um, it's good to be a combination. So this was wonderful to, to see. Um, Christina shared in our ba basics of budgeting the categories that and some of the percentages that we should be spending on. Um, so just as uh, this, I mean, this isn't an, an exact, but it's a really good way to proportion your money. So for housing, you want to have about 35% of your income and your revenue going towards that and utilities. Transportation will be your car note you know, gas and any related expenses for your vehicle. And then we have uh, food. So see all of us who were talking about food this morning, mm -hmm. food is only supposed to be about 15% of the budget, but you can sometimes, I have US Bank, Wells Fargo and a credit union. And I believe all three of my banks have a tool where I can filter and I can see like a pie chart. <laughs> and usually the pie chart for food is so big, so. Um, be attentive. The groceries and the ordering at home, because there's a lot of fees when you have that food delivered, it, that becomes a very quick way to um, throw off your budget. So let's be attentive there. Okay. Now, lifestyle expense. This one also, I saw a lot of clothing purchases, entertainment, plan those things out. I just moved from California to Las Vegas. Las Vegas has so many things for me to be entertained by. And there's concerts all the time. I think Usher, Bruno Mars. I mean, it's everybody I want to see is on my summer and fall list of places and people I want to go and, and enjoy that experience. Because remember, I'm an experienced type of individual. So we have to plan those things out and work them into our budget so that I'm not emotional at the last, like, oh, maybe I should go. Okay, bye. No, you have to plan it out. And that way you're not rocking the boat and your money is just freely always leaving you, okay? And that's what emotional spending is about, doing it in a way that is sporadic and unplanned. And so our money goes in places that it really shouldn't. Um, savings should be about 10%. And then we want about 10% um, going towards debt. Now, I know Christina did also talk about some of the methods that we could reduce our debt and credit cards. So you may have to sometimes shift things, but um, this is just more of a general way that you could look at, you know, your income and then what um, your expenses look like. Okay, so this is what it looks like more on a chart basis. And like I said, if yours don't look like this, I'm telling you, my food one, 
looks a little more, <laughs> it's a little bigger. So um, my transportation is, is a bit lower, but my food and lifestyle expenses sometimes can, can, you know, shift depending on whose birthday or whose events are coming up. So something to really keep in mind. Okay. So, Quinta, we had a comment in the in the chat box and I wanted to ask you, Tracy said, I would imagine in 2022, the housing is much more, much, much higher. Yes. Is that true or is that what it should be? This is, well, great question. Thank you, Tracy, for bringing this up. Housing, when you're initially like um, moving into a place, whether it's um, condo, townhome, um, or purchasing a home, they usually will factor in about one third of your income, whether that's for approval or they want you to be making three times as much as what you're spending on just your housing costs. So that's, I believe, the concept behind, you know, the percentages. Um, and it allows you to have a good amount of cushion for the other aspects of your life. So like for me, when I moved from California to Nevada, the, it depends on what city you're in. So I have a friend who's in Peoria, Illinois, and North Carolina. And so their housing expenses are much lower, but we make around the same amount of money. So their money is going to stretch further in a different city. So I think it's those kinds of um, considerations. What city do you live in? Um, what, what is happening with inflation? So yeah, it, you know, everywhere is going up. Nevada is going crazy right now. Um, when I originally signed my lease and what they're wanting to, you know, have it be for my renewal, two totally different numbers, like incredibly different numbers. So I, I think this chart and these recommendations that Christina and I are sharing is what it should look like so that it's, yes, it's more ideal, exactly. Yeah, and I guess I, yeah, and I guess what I was thinking is like you hit on it, like with the inflation and obviously for the AV, I, I, I mean, I know, I know a lot of people on the, on the, the workshop are from AV, but if you're not, you know, the AV used to be a place where, you know, a lot of people would come from LA proper and get very, I mean, when I first moved up here, my rent was 950. That same apartment is now $2,000. So when you factor in all of that, it's, it's not as easy to keep that housing. I mean, I've heard people are at like 60, 65% housing. And how do you do anything but basically try and survive with, you know, 65% of your income going to housing? So anyways, just wanted to. No, what you're saying is, is, is the reality. But if, if we could, and like you said, you know, is that um, for a one person income, um, um, single income, you know, are there two people working in the household? We just came out of the pandemic. Some people you know, are now getting new jobs. Some people left their jobs or were, you know, let go. So yeah, this is more ideal scenario. This is not perfect. You know, in 2022, a lot of things have changed. Some of us are making big decisions, changing up our housing or cities or residences because of these things. But yeah, housing prices have skyrocketed. A lot of people are thinking like, should I buy a house? So at least my mortgage will be locked in. Like it's, it's so many things to consider. And that, again, goes into the emotional part of decision making when it comes to our money. So that was a great comment and question. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up, because this is more about, you know, what society would benefit from if, we, if it could look like this. But we know that's not the case. That's not the case today. Oh, we have another question. Yes, Christina, come on in. Everyone, this is co -host. please share. Yes, I just wanted to just piggyback and encourage people from that chart because I know you look at it and it can be discouraging because you're like, it's all out of whack. And so the, the main area that I wanted to encourage people is to just be aware, be aware of the situation. When one percentage of a category is higher, that does mean another category is lowered. And so oftentimes those are the basic six categories of our life. And so I wanted to highlight that because you may be overspending in food or in a lifestyle category where that needs, that, that needs to be decreased because it's putting you into debt and it's taking away from your savings. So it's really just giving you a moment of awareness 
that, wow, okay, there's some things that, that need to change. And uh, I always like to say your temporary sacrifices are for long-term gain rewards. So if you have a goal in mind, knowing of uh, any type of financial goal or, or achievement that you want to acquire, that usually gives you that motivation to cut back on some of the more easily spendable categories than others. Absolutely, I fully agree, I fully agree. So we've talked about the emotions, we've talked about uh, personality types when it comes to our relationship with money. So now we're gonna end with the actual triggers and causes that make us spend, okay? And oh, we had something new pop up in the chat. I see it. Yes, I was spending too much on Uber Eats. Mm. Yeah, when you see your pie chart, I listen, I'm visual. So the pie, not only does it make me hungry thinking of pizza or, you know, <laughs> just pie in general, but yes, yeah, sometimes those charts and tools from our banks um, can really help us to see it. If, if you don't have a method to know how to create your own, um, a lot of the banks have been giving tools. And so I like the pie chart too. Okay, so let's talk about our emotions and our habits and what makes us spin. What are the triggers? Okay, so we're going to kind of put some like words and phrases to the emotion. So the first one, and this is not in any particular order, but shock. So this is, is what we all kind of just went through, okay? Just unexpected life stuff, okay? Finances change, um, you know, mass layoffs, a, a major vehicle repair. My transmission went out like four weeks ago, y'all. And I had just finished, you know, repairing the brakes. I just felt like I was pouring so much money into this car, trying to keep it going, but you know, I was just shocked at how much, you know, I spent on a car within a matter of, of weeks and days. Um, so medical issues, oh, so many families have gone through major, major medical issues. And these are just unexpected shocks to our life. And it, it will trigger that same emotion. Okay. The second emotion I want to cover is just sadness overall. Uh, I went through a divorce six years ago, and in that breakup process, not only did I need to um, reestablish my life as a single uh, mom, but there was the traumatic impact of, of I don't want to see this person's couch that we used to sit on. Like So just sadness. Um, I, I brought up earlier, my mother passed away um, in 2019. Um, me and Christina, we lost our mom. And from that death, we, we spent on different aspects of honoring her life, you know, even down to the place where she, you know, her remains rest. Um, so there's a lot that comes along with the death or, or losing um, our loved ones. Um, sometimes when we're coming back from abuse, you know, we want to have our hearts to heal. So sadness is a very huge emotion that will make us spend. And um, oftentimes it, it can be a healing process and justify, but other times it can really damage and, and make that spending spiral occur. So I know that this happens. Like I said, I'm being open to let you all know I've been here. Um, the next one is envy. So I will definitely say, um, there are times when the social media or an influencer has on a cute little, you know, waist wrap, you know, and, they, <laughs> and I'm, I'm purchasing the same waist trainer and I want to have that small waistline or I see a commercial and the cheese from that pizza is just going on for days. And I'm like, I need that pizza, I need that pizza in my life. So just spending impulsively because, you know, a, a, a commercial or, or marketing, you know, has me wanting a certain lifestyle or a look or even just to taste, you know, I'm envious of that person eating that burger, you know, so it's, it, it can happen. Um, envy is definitely very real. Now, there's a more beautiful side to the way our emotions can make us spin. Um, Faith-based entities or nonprofits, we may see that they're doing a cause or a drive 
or um, for instance, I, my sorority just had a huge uh, fundraiser for our scholarships for, for youth and young women and, and men going off to college and, and we sold donuts. And so many people were compelled to give, like I think it was just the compassion. And I, I believe we sold over 300 boxes of donuts, you know, um, Krispy Kreme donuts and raised, you know, a couple um, thousand dollars for charity. So things like that make us compelled to give. And oftentimes um, we want to be a part of good going on in the world. So it could be something globally. I know a lot of us, you know, we, we hear about what's happening in the news and in the Ukraine. So a lot of times if our heart is pulled in a charitable manner, that emotion will, you know, compel us to give. Uh, the next one is pride. Um, just, you know, feeling real cute, you know, hey, I'm gonna upgrade my phone because it gives me this, this look on my right side of my face that makes me glow in my eyebrow. Let me tell you, I got my eyebrows done. Listen, I didn't have this lovely arch before I went and got these eyebrows tattooed on my eyes. And I'm just being open. I wanted the look of this eyebrow. And so I spent money on it so that I could have the look and achieve it in a way. But it was, it was, it was very vain, you know, and some people may say. Um, but it makes my self-image like I really, really appreciate the fact that I don't have to try and draw them on. And, you know, I didn't really know if my makeup always looked right. So um, some people after like a cosmetic surgery or weight loss, have you ever seen people who lose a lot of weight and now they're feeling better? So, you know, that new pride of your body, you know, boom, bam. Thank you, ma'am. You know, so sometimes we're spending on new clothes or feeling good about ourselves. Uh, maybe you get a new career change and you go and spend on your, yourself because you're like, I'm now the manager of the region or I'm now, you know, so you dressing differently and you may be, you know, shopping a little more often. So these are some things that could be triggered from just that pride, excitement, things like that. Um, selfishness. Now this is a category that I had never heard really talked about as much, but it happens all the time. When you're in a self-centered place and there's addictive behavior going on, or you may have lived with or known someone, have a family member or relative who may deal with some of these things. And I definitely am not going to say at this time, you know, put that in the chat, but just as you think to yourself, um, how could my budget really be impacted by any of these things that I've listed? Gambling, I live in Vegas. I mean, they have the casino and then a little pamphlet. Do you need help? I'm like, yes, people need help. <laughs> yes. So that compulsive addictive behavior, you know, um, dependency, cravings, individuals who struggle with an addiction to food and they're morbidly obese. We see reality shows all the time about this. And people spending, you know, large amounts of money on cigarettes or they can't stop. You know, so that's what I'm talking about, obsessive and compulsive behaviors. Um, but it's really a, 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 a selfish, self-centered um, emotion because it, it, it feels satisfied by these things, okay? So that's what I'm speaking to. I'm not saying that it's bad or good um, because the compulsion could be, you know, to give everybody um, a, a new Gucci purse. But if you're buying every single person a Gucci purse, you're compelled to do this all the time. You're going to ruin your budget is going to be blown every month. Okay. And then the last one I'll, I'll really focus on is really just joy and excitement. And I, I can't tell you how many people I've seen having babies <laughs> in COVID and, you know, um, new additions to their family or a home purchase and they want to redecorate the whole house before anybody steps in it to see it, you know, like I think as Americans, we, we, we got these new shows and they're always redecorating design on a dime. And, you know, so there's a lot of decisions and, and money um, decisions that we make because we're excited. We're just full of joy. You know, I'm going on a trip. You better believe I bought a cute new sundress going on my cruise. Of course I did. I have that, you know, but I, I budgeted it in. But sometimes we, we will overdo it. Um, I, I saw a eighth grader, eighth grader graduating, I think it was last year, and mom had like a limo and, uh, you know, balloon arch and, and, and champagne. I'm like, it's eighth grade. 
Now, if this isn't 12, what's going on? <laughs> so, you know, that excitement, I guess she was happy. My baby, little Devante, is, is, great, is graduating from eighth grade. So, you know, bless Devante's heart, you know, <laughs> finishing up eighth grade. Um, holidays. There, are, there are, are individuals who, you know, they want the whole house to have that holiday feel, you know, uh, Christmas, Kwanzaa, you know, New Year's, it just, so holidays can make us spin sometimes or overspin. So that's what we're talking about, how these emotions and their, their um, when they're overdone, when we are, we're not controlling them and identifying them, like right now, I'm really excited about my new house, but I, my budget is out of control. So that's what I want us to really notice. How do we get honest with ourselves and notice when we're in any of these emotional states and how do we control it, okay? I'm gonna check the chat. Ah, I love it. Christine says, put it in the budget and space out your savings. So that must've been in response a little bit ago. Thank you. Okay, so in, in summary, this, this conversation has really been about admitting, recognizing, and identifying, okay? And so some questions that you can ask yourself is how am I managing that emotion? And do I feel in control of that emotion or am I hiding it, okay? Like, do I struggle to talk about it? Is this something I keep a secret? Am I in denial about it, okay? Because if there's a problem, then we need to seek some positive alternatives and solutions. That could be counseling. That could be therapy. That could be talking to a trusted friend. It could be getting an advisor, a spending coach, you know, getting with a tax professional, um, you know, someone who can help you through that and getting some tools and resources that will help you to get in control of it again. Because we don't want our money just leaving us because our emotions are out of whack. Okay, so that's really some of the uh, the issues when our, our emotions are not in check, but some emotional spending tips that can be very helpful. And my sister started off last week with her own form of the ABCs of financial literacy. So my ABCs today are adjust because it's okay to recategorize your expenses. And Christina shared that, and I'm sharing it again. Look at your income, look at the categories and the spending amounts and adjust if you need to mid month, okay? It's okay, adjust. The second one is going to be be patient. Just wait, see if you wait three days and if you still wanna spend on it, okay? I should have waited with the, the caddy for my shower. I didn't need it. I still have it. I need to return it and get my $24.99 back. <laughs> but wait, sometimes just waiting will help your emotion to change and shift and you won't even need to buy it. So three weeks, three days, three months, okay? And then the last one is just create a plan. Track yourself emotionally, label your emotion and then designate the specific amount um, or look at your accounts and see where your money is going. So it's almost like um, doing an inventory on yourself, okay? So those are my three ABCs for today. You are welcome to take all three or choose which one that you need because we all are a little different as we saw in the chat. Everyone has a little different style of, of their money um, relationship. So I'd like to end as I, um, before we do a little bit of, um, wrap up in some questions with some money affirmations. So if you'd like, um, you can close your eyes or you can, if you have your camera on, you can cut your camera off, but we're going to end with some money affirmations and just breathing because we've talked about a lot. We've talked about grief and loss. We've talked about how pain and breakups, divorces, marriages, um, stress, um, how envy, how all of these different types of emotions, joy, can really, you know, make us change our decisions when it comes to our money. But our money, it should be a tool that we use that, that keeps us in a place of, of peace and provides us with a lifestyle that, you know, complements a healthy mindset. But I do understand 
that sometimes things get out of control. So affirming, affirming your mindset, whether you do it at the beginning of the day, middle of the day, or end of your day, is something I encourage uh, clients or just individuals to do so that you're telling your mind versus your mind con controlling you with emotion, okay? Because all of these things can be controlled. So um, I'm gonna have us, if you're sitting, you can like um, put your feet flat on the ground. Um, if you'd like, you can roll your shoulders a little bit. You can breathe in if you'd like, breathe out if you'd like, because sometimes our minds are just so busy. Sometimes we have so much on our minds and our emotions are driving us instead of just being a passenger in the car, and that's okay. So the first of the affirmation says, I am in control of my money. I am generous with my money. I let go of all my fears around money. Attracting money comes easily to me. I am worthy of what I desire. I am aligned with my purpose. I know that money is freedom. I am smart with my money. I am worthy of positive changes in my life. And let's breathe in one more time. My life is full of wealth beyond money. Okay. So just remember our emotions are a natural part of our psychological life. And mental wellness is being able to be in tune and aware so that we can support and be present for one another, but mostly to ourselves, it starts with us. So if you want to learn more, there is a quiz and I can um, drop that in the chat or you can look on, uh, look on buzzfeed.com. There's quite a few different money personality quizzes. I know we did most of this in our chat. So I think uh, many of us may want to just explore a little more, but I can definitely share or send it out and it will be a part of the recording. And now we have finished two of our four financial literacy workshops. So the next seminar is going to be on Tuesday, the 26th, this upcoming week at 5 p.m. And it is going to be about your financial flex, okay? How does your family create wealth and what are things to prepare for for each generation, okay? So kids and yourself and parents. So I'm excited. I can't wait. I've, I've done some great planning for us and we will talk about that. But I'd like you to drop in the chat. Um, how you're spending or, um, or how you're feeling now. What is the, the emotion that you're feeling now that we've talked about some of these different, oh, a spending coach, see that in the chat. Um, yes, if you want some coaching on spending or budgeting, um, you can reach out to Christina or myself. We have consultations or, you know, you can book time with us if you'd like. Okay, so yeah, write what emotion you're feeling now. What's going on with you in your head and your heart as it relates to? Ah, I love it. I love it. I see the first comment is, is feeling good. Take control <laughs> and not letting your emotions control you. Yes. Snap, snap. <laughs> feeling more aware. Oh, thank you, Elisa. Thank you so much. That's a beautiful bit of feedback. I am going to drop our, sur our survey or um, if, if someone could, I don't think I know how to do both at the same time. So, oh, I love Candy says she's feeling more informed and an I can attitude. Wonderful, mm -hmm. that's, that's phenomenal. If you would like, if you wanna, um, if you can send me the link or mm -hmm. we can put it, I can put it copy it into the chat or you can just copy the link and put it in the chat right now okay let's see if that can works copy that link there you go did it oh all right you got it girl you did it i did that doing it all okay so i want to give some time for open discussion 
And also for us to complete our survey, and then I have um, one, I believe, one more tool. Um, I love the next comment. I feel like I can be more in control of my finances than I have in the past. That is wonderful. That is so phenomenal. Awesome. Okay, so if you all would take a moment, click on the survey, and just share a little bit of feedback or what you recall what's awakened in you and how you're feeling now. I really wanted to make this um, very interactive so that we could together really open up and, and share like, hey, this is my money personality. And some of y'all may have, you know, <laughs> found some yeah. friends in, in, in spending and um, the experienced people, we should all go to Tokyo State. You know, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> we need to go and have some food. Um, but I want to open up for questions or any type of, of feedback, because I think it's important that we just dialogue and open up, you know, together. So does anyone have a, a question? And it doesn't necessarily have to be about you. It can be for, you know, someone else about, you know, the emotion that you may find yourself in most often when you're spending, or you may want to ask the link said, oh, okay. okay, you've already responded to it. Okay, I'll make sure um, people can do additional. Um, thank you for that comment, Adele. Let's see about fixing that. Okay. You know what, as you are going through the different personality types of what kind of uh, spender you are or what kind of money personality, I found myself, I was like, man, I'm divergent. I have all of those. And um, just coming to uh, understanding that um, it's never too late to get a a hold of your finances if you want to move forward and saving and spending and things like that. But I found I was like, I'm kind of mixed up with all of that. Mm -hmm. So, and that the emotions are so real when I am spending, it's like, okay, I need a break from Zoom. I'm going to the mall and buy a pair of jeans or, you know, or I'm really excited that I'm losing weight. But the real reality is I can't wear any of my clothes. So now I got to go buy me something that I can wear in public. And that looked like, you know, my clothes are going to fall off in the street when I'm walking. So it's just like, oh, okay, but wait, I got to have some boundaries. Yes, I, I think that's that excitement, you know, when, when you have a goal that you're achieving and then you start to see the, the actual uh, physical manifestation of it. So, yeah, that's a great example during weight loss. You know, when do you buy more clothes? Is it, you know, a little bit at a time? So maybe you budget it in like this month, I'll get, you know, two new dresses and two pair of pants and a couple new tops. But I'm going to go instead of maybe Neiman Marcus or, you know, maybe the most luxurious, you know, I'm going to I'm going to go over to Ross or I'm going to see if they have any sales uh, at JC. Yeah. Or, you know, just it's OK to still do those things, but we want to make sure that we work it into the budget working. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a really um, phenomenal way that you, you know, shared because when we're open like that with ourselves, then we're just always using our budget as the tool. That's the guiding tool. And that's the whole premise is being literate about our finances. Like you need to educate yourself on your personal spending so that when you want to do something that's more of a goal or a long-term strategy, whether it's, I want to be a real estate investor, or I want another property, or how do we make sure we're building, you know, wealth? It all starts with being financially literate about our personal situations. So you're right. You know, if you're becoming fitness minded, we also need to be financially minded too. Right, right. Tracy, someone asked in the chat box, how can we watch um, Tuesday's session if we weren't able to attend? Yeah, I was just responding. So all of our videos for all of our workshops, because we have a diversity workshop going on right now. We have financial literacy with the Martin sisters. And then we also have our um, CAP, which is our child abuse prevention speaker series. They're all on our videos. So when this video goes out today, um, just make sure that you have signed in. We have the sign in link. I'll put it in the chat again, and then you'll be getting um, the video. And then you can also find the YouTube channel, which has all of our trainings. 
Any other comments, um, questions that you might have for LaQuinta? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank you all for attending. This is our second one for our financial literacy. Join us again. We will be back on Tuesday. LaQuinta will be back as she stated, and we are so looking forward to this. Um, and it's, if you know anyone that would benefit from this particular training, encourage them to go to Eventbrite and sign up. It's not too late. They can catch uh, next Tuesday and next Saturday. So if you know anyone, share it in our in your community. We look forward to it. I want to thank LaQuinta. This was an awesome training. I learned so much and I am looking forward to next week. I really am. I was like, well, I'm going to learn about that again. So make sure you can go to our YouTube channel. You can look, look at this video when you sign up, we'll send you the video itself, but you can review and go back through some of those notes that uh, LaQuinta shared on her, her presentation. It, it's just great information for us and for a lot of our families and the residents that where we live, okay? I wanna thank you all for joining us this Saturday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and uh, we'll see you hopefully by next Tuesday. And for those of us, for those of you who are in the AV, we are at the Poppy Festival. Darrell and I will be there right. in about an hour. So come by to the Poppy Festival and say hi. I'm looking at you, Adele. <laughs> yeah, so Adele. Come by and say hi. Hi, Candace and Tony. Chantel, hi, Tracy. Adele, <laughs> Karina, Carmen, Jess. So wonderful to see you all. See you on the next one Tuesday night. Bye, everyone. Have bye. a great day. Bye.